Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program. Myself, Martin Blackham, with my wife, Natalie Blackham, live from our studio in Jerusalem. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're watching live on YouTube, then please do contact us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And please tell us where you're watching from in the world. If you're watching at a later date, if you're watching uh, on a recorded video, then please uh, email us at info at israelfirst.org and we'd love to hear from you. Well, the big news in the studio as we've come in today in Israel was that hospitals have threatened to stop taking new patients due to financial woes. Professor Zev Rothstein, from, he's the head of Hadassah Hospital, is a legendary hospital in Israel, said that the hospital located in Jerusalem no longer had enough medical equipment or medicine to provide for new patients. People must realize this, he said, we no longer have a large stock of medications or medical equipment and what, do, what we do have must serve the patients already being looked after. It's not impossible that Hadassah Hospital could run out of all medical supplies and we will be forced to move patients to other hospitals where they could get better care, which is really unheard of. Hospital officials wrote to the health ministry, the Israeli health ministry, and explained that due to the health and finance ministries offering to cover only some of the medical supplies, the hospital had to sp stop buying new equipment on the 10th of January 2021. The hospital has uh, 142 COVID-19 patients and 87 of them are in critical condition. The officials also requested that emergency services stop delivering COVID-19 patients to the hospital. The directors of Jerusalem's Sher Sedek Hospital, Netanya's Lan Aedo Medical Center, B'nai Brax Mayan Ha Yeshua Hospitals, as well as all three hospitals in Nazareth, informed. This one is in the B'nai Brax. Yeah, mm -hmm. as informed the uh, director of Israel's National Ambulance and Emergency Service uh, that they could no longer have patients delivered to them, including coronavirus patients and that would be starting next week. But we have some developments, Natalie. Yes, I heard about the story of a lady. She was old, she had COVID, and she was going into an ambulance of Mada, Magen David Adom, and uh, they couldn't go into a hospital. And so they started to intube her in the, in the ambulance, do as much as they could in the ambulance, but unfortunately she was in a uh, breathing distress and she died and you can imagine for the for the families also like really uh, a grievous fact and so um, this is like what was happening and not not only this person but like you can imagine the sick people are still phoning Magen David Adom the ambulance arrived and suddenly the ambulance were blocked I mean we had to wait and wait and wait in the hospital uh, all in uh, in Israel, so it was a trouble. But we have a good news that now the Ministry of Health said that they release some money now for uh, the hospitals that really need some help, and they are going to be helped. So fortunately, they are, the patients are going to be uh, looked after again. So, but it was a big for a few days. It was really terrible uh, in Israel. Yeah, and um, you know this is very serious. By the way, Magen David Adam is the national uh, it's like ambulance. like the Red Cross. Yeah, the national ambulance service of Israel, and uh, we've done an interview uh, with their spokesperson Yoni Yagodowski, and you can uh, look on YouTube underneath this one. Uh, there's a link, and you can watch the interview we did with him, where he's explaining all the different issues that Magen David Adam have had. Uh, with coronavirus. Well, the other big news is as we've come into the studio today, and we're live from our studio in Jerusalem, broadcasting to you on YouTube, and uh, it says that Israel has shut the main airport, that's Ben Gurion Airport, amid fear of COVID-19 variants. The government has stopped incoming and outgoing flights until the end of the month to try to halt the spread of coronavirus in the country. Ben Gurion Airport will completely close until the end of the month. The cabinet approved the decision in a meeting on Sunday. The push to impose further restrictions on travel to and from Israel comes against the backdrop of uh, revelations 
and further information that's been discovered about the infectiousness and suspected increased lethality of novel coronavirus variants that have developed in several areas around the world. Travellers will be prevented from entering or leaving the country except in special cases approved by a committee. The ban on entering Israel includes new immigrants making Aliyah, marking the first time that immigration under the law of return has been halted in the history of the State of Israel. Immigration Minister Panina Tameno Shatter opposed the move during the cabinet meeting. She's the minister who's in charge of Aliyah. And she's Ethiopian, so it's like the first time that they have an Ethiopian minister for the Aliyah, which is very important. And she's trying to bring 200 more Ethiopians right now. And it's very difficult because because of all the, the situation, um, people can't make Aliyah anymore, which is like unheard of. And it's interesting because, you know, some and rabbi it's... and some people have said, you know, watch out if you want to make Aliyah, make Aliyah, because one day it might not be open anymore. And people sometimes say, well, you know, it's a lot of organization. You really want to move here, change your job, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and, and you really need to make sure and but now Aliyah is uh, stopped. Too. Yeah, and uh, you know that uh, it's very serious because Aliyah is, is biblical, you know, it's the, the return of the Jewish people, the lost tribes coming back to the nation of Israel uh, in accordance with the Bible, in accordance mm -hmm. with prophecy, mm -hmm. they're coming back to the land of Israel. And so to stop that is a very serious thing. And indeed, some people from the United States were going to make Aliyah, but the airport closed. And, you know, we don't really know, Natalie, how long travel. I remember when there was the, there's two instances I can remember, 9-11, and then there was the instance of the volcano erupting i believe it was in i i think it was in iceland but i'm not sure yeah there was a volcano eruption which spread the, a lot of smoke 2010 that, um, i think it was make it impo impossible for airlines to mm -hmm. operate and we don't know how long uh that you know you'll be able to travel so uh, this is a very serious serious issue and uh p prime minister benjamin netanyahu said we're sealing our skies except for limited exceptions in order to prevent the entry of the virus mutations and to ensure that we quickly progress with our vaccine campaign so that uh, more israelis are vaccinated soon again this is another issue you know about vaccination we don't know how effective that is or you know how safe it is yeah. and you know there's a, a story natalie i recently read of the Israeli soldiers' uh, parents complaining that they were being under some pressure to have to have the vaccine. And uh, and if you're, by the way, we are doing this live. If you're watching by YouTube, please um, email us. Let us know wherever you're watching in the world. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, love to receive um, your comments. And according to the outline approved by the government, no foreign planes will be allowed to enter the country except for cargo planes, firefighting planes and flights devoted to medical evacuation. Moreover, the licenses, and this is again unheard of, of Israeli airlines have been temporarily suspended. No one wow, will, I didn't know that. You know, like El Al, for example, they, their license to fly has been suspended. No one will be allowed to leave the country except for receiving medical treatments uh, participating in legal proceedings or to attend a funeral. Other requests for humanitarian reasons will be examined and approved on an ad hoc basis by the Director General of the Health and Transportation yeah, so Ministers. I, I heard now, like this morning, that there is one plane who are allowed to go and is to Frankfurt and after from Frankfurt they will travel wherever they want and only one who comes in uh, in the evening. So it's really, really tight. And, you know, the other issue is that, um, as w because when we'll talk about this in a minute, about the lockdown, but Israel is to close all the land borders. Uh, Two, yeah. To close all the land borders in and out of Israel. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu says Israel's managed to hold back the UK mutation responsible for the surge in new cases and needs to make sure the other variants don't ent enter the country. Interior Minister Derry confirmed the closure of the Jordan River, uh, Tabor and uh, Arava crossings until the end of January uh, to stop the uh, entry of um, these different strains of COVID-19. Um, 
So it's, you know, in connection, it's another thing as well as the uh, closure of the airport. There is mm -hmm. also the closure of the land entries. By the way, one of the land entries, which is the famous Allenby Bridge uh, into Jordan, will, be re will remain open to allow Arab residents uh, of Israel to be able to access um, you know for what, humanitarian this, this reasons. This reminds me there is a verse somewhere, I, I didn't look at it uh, today, I didn't know that you are going to speak about that, but it's written that everybody will go back into their own country. Do you remember that? There mm -hmm. is a passage, and which is, like, is what we are seeing now. Yeah, and um, you know the Israeli government is also meeting, as I, as I said, about the lockdown. Uh, as we're coming into the studio, they're having a special meeting to, about discussing the extent uh, of the extending of the lockdown, including the, cl uh, the continued closure of the airport and land borders. Health Minister Yuli Elderstein, Prime Minister Netanyahu, vowed to prolong both measures uh, to protect Israel from the variants. We will decide for how long uh, we continue this lockdown based on the morbidity rate, Elderstein said. Uh, in Israel at the moment, there are some 7,737 new cases of the novel coronavirus reported with 9.6%, almost 10%, returning positive. Of those infected, 1,141 patients are in serious condition and 311 are on which ventilators. Is, yeah, which is still a lot after we are going into our third week of a lockdown, isn't it? Third week? Fourth week? Oh, my God. I think it's the third week. So I think people like have forgotten which, <laughs> which... I don't think it's that so important which week it is uh, because we've all lost track of time, <laughs> dates, you know. Uh, it's funny uh -huh. because you do, a, you do the news and you realise you try and give it dates, but actually dates have kind of gone out the window, really, because <laughs> nobody knows where they are or what they're doing. But it's so, Happy New Year, Martin. Thank you. <laughs> And, but, no, Natalie's, Natalie's made a very good point because, uh, folks, it is a uh, happy new year. And why is it happy it new year? It is, it is. We're in January, end of January, but it is happy new year. We're happy not late. We're not, by the way, we are yeah. not late for the 1st of January. And, no. uh, and we're not, it's not a program that's out of date that you're watching from the 1st of January. It is indeed at the end of January. But, why is it happy new year? It's happy new year for our trees because it's the... We are celebrating Tu Bishvat, which is the 15th of Shabbat, is a month in uh, the Hebrew uh, calendar. And we were saying this is very important to look at all these things, because again, we, we can see we are the world, okay, is in a time of transformation. And now we have to think also how our creators think. And like the Hebrew calendar is very important because usually in the world we are with the Gregorian calendar, as we are saying, 1st of January is the new year all around the world usually. But I mean, like China, China is a bit different. But anyway, you know, like in the world, in the professional world, I would say, is like 1st of January is a Gregorian uh, calendar, which was done like about 2000 years ago. But you have the Jewish calendar, which is from the creation of the world, interesting enough. And so right now we are speaking about two Bishvat, which is the 15th of Shvat, and is the New Year of the Trees. New Year of the Trees, but you know, there is a lot of things also with that, is also the, for the healing of the nations. And why do we speak about to be shot? Is because the sap is going back into the tree. Is still. I thought we were losing we, leaves. I, from what I can see in our row, we're losing leaves. I don't yes, because the winter here has been very mild this year. We had some uh, some water, and a lot of water, by the way, because they were saying uh, they are very happy. The lake Kineret, the lake, oh, the lake of uh, Galilee, which is called the uh, like Kineret, is, um, is up quite a lot compared to many years where we had really a drought here. So a lot of good things are happening here. And you're right, because the winter has been so mild, we are still just losing the last leaves on our trees, which is amazing. Meanwhile, I have already some little trees, some little fruits who are gully, or go, sorry, already growing in our garden, the loquat, 
but also we have around now on our hills uh, almond trees who are blossoming beautiful it's like a white color and some are pink and so why and so why is it happy new year for trees because if the leaves the are sap, off. because no because the sap is starting to go up and you know, so you can't see it right but there is already a renewing always happening mm. and it's part also of this like it's also bringing healing to the nations there is a healing process when the fruits are coming back i mean when it's the right at the beginning even if you don't see it and it's like again we can speak about all these things singing about what what the world is going going through transformation we can see bad things like the leaves falling we can see people dying but in the main things that god is doing we can see that there is something new that god is doing that the nations have to go back also into alignment right. with Yerushalayim. I, I thought uh, to this uh, to be fat. yeah I thought that was the celebration of planting trees. Now mm. this is true this is a new tradition you're very right there is a new tradition now in Israel that around that time we plant more trees and obviously you know that a lot of trees were cut by the Romans or by also, um, no, sorry, maybe not the Romans, but especially during the Ottoman Empire, there was taxes on the trees, so they cut a lot of the trees. And when the Jewish people came here, there wasn't very much trees. And one of the big things that they've done was um, planting trees. And now it's becoming really, it's like a tradition now, which is beautiful. And I've done it this year. We've planted a little lemon tree in our garden. Um, because it's something to have maybe, trees. Maybe we'll do something about that, uh, that will give you the opportunity for you to be able to plant a tree in Israel. Maybe we can, um, there are different ways that you can do that and maybe as a program we would like to help you, the viewers, uh, plant a tree in Israel. So mm -hmm. keep in touch with us, we'll have a look into that and see if we can help, the, mm -hmm. help them to, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, well, one of, the, one of the amazing things, and we've talked about this on the program, uh, is the technological advances in Israel. And uh, the big story uh, in, the, in the news at the moment, which is very important, is the question is, will Amazon, the huge American company, build a gigantic cloud server farm in Israel? Industry sources say Amazon is a leading contender for the Israeli government's massive Nimbus cloud-based data center project, which would move much of the government, the Israeli government's IT infrastructure to the cloud. Well, oh, I didn't realize, but obviously it must be data-based in computers at the moment, in um, servers, their own Israeli servers. Uh, one of the only the world's largest cloud service providers have been invited to submit bids for the tender which will which will be worth hundreds of millions of dollars now, not millions is, of dollars but hundreds of millions of dollars this is interesting when you say that because i was thinking you know like in israel we have not so much trouble with our servers because um they do a lot of uh how Protection. Guard protection for us so we don't need to do it ourselves because when we're in England we have much more trouble so they do a lot of protection for the country we like like under an umbrella but when you speak about these things mm. he means that this protection may be gone and it's like for me I'm trying to understand where we are going at and it's like I can see America going down but now Israel is rising up which is okay but again okay if we do the right thing if it's used in the right direction but well like it, it concerns it, it i mean you, i can see the benefits of this and i'll talk a bit about that in one minute but uh the difficulty is having a private company involved with government data and however you look at it uh your data is on there because government data obviously has your information has to have it for whether you register for tax, whether you register as a member of the population with births and deaths, etc., or whether uh, what uh, you even with your car tax, whatever it is you deal with the government, 
that is registered on government systems. Now, if that has to land into the hands of private uh, companies, then that is, a, in my view, is, is concerning, Natalie. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, but they're saying uh, they have to do this because they need to go to the cloud uh, with all the information. And cloud computing is a flexible service model and it's uh, which, you know, allows them, you know, the infrastructure uh, to be based in these what they call cloud server farms. And uh, Microsoft's cloud computing service, although the, the current infrastructure is considered far below the global standard, has been looking as well uh, to put a bid in for this uh, move. In 2014, the Israeli government decided to transfer the internet, uh, for, sorry, the IT infrastructure of its ministries and units to cloud computing. And the Nimbus tender was published just last year. So it's, it's kind of a funny thing, you know, in the middle of everything, suddenly the data uh, is going to possibly be on the cloud. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's concerning. Um, at the moment, Amazon operates 26 server farms. These are not farms with animals, but farms with huge Comp underground computer uh, computers and uh, just the massive areas that they use um, and people say the project is an extraordinary opportunity for Israel for its economic recovery the entry of Amazon some people are saying into the Israeli market would result in direct and indirect investment of billions of dollars and will impact Israel's economy well of course with the lockdown which we've just been talking about with the difficulties with the economy it, you can see why it's very tempting for the Israeli government to uh, to take this on board and to um, to have Amazon, you know, running all the different things. But I, I personally think that it's a very dangerous situation mm -hmm. uh, that we're living in. Yeah. Do you want the story of Metusela? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I will have a, a great story to tell you today, and we're speaking about the two. To Bishvat. Happy Bishvat. New Year trees. Exactly. And so I wanted to update you on Metusela. Did do you remember what is Metusela? No. Um, yes. What is Just, it? Uh, roughly. Not yeah. so it's well as you. It's the date. The date tree. tree. Yes. yes. The date tree. Is it? You see, I put him on the on the spot. Um, it's a date tree, and the the story is amazing. In two thousand and five. Um, there was a lady in a, in a lab in Israel. They had seeds who, that they find in Masada, <coughs> which was like 2,000 two, two, two years ago, okay? And it was in the lab for a while, and suddenly she said, hey, maybe we they can They were 2,000 years old? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so uh, it was in the lab, and one day she said, okay, we need to do something about it. So she planted put some enzyme to help this amazing old, very old seed to um, germinate. And what happened? It germinated. And so in 2005, um, this seed sprouted. By the way, it's the oldest seed who's been germinated uh, from a very old seed. So it's like quite uh, amazing to see that. And so... I mean, it, I, I, it, yeah, it seems to me a bit of a miracle that a 2,000-year-old seed... Now this exists. That, Never mind yes. that it can sprout. I know, I know. They find them because they went in the ruins of Masada. Masada, if you remember, is the place where um, there was the last contingent of Jewish people who all committed suicide because the Romans uh, were coming to get them, and they say, "You won't get us. We are die." We, they commit suicide because they didn't want to uh, give the pleasure to Roman people to kill them. So this is a very important place. It's close to the Dead Sea, so very dry and no humidity. So because of that, we think that the sea is kept very well, very well preserved. Now, this lady again has done a lot of work because they had many seeds and she tried to find the best one because some were eaten by insects and, you know, things. Anyway, this is a background story. But this Methuselah, they call it Methuselah because Methuselah was a man in the Bible who was the oldest, so they wanted to give this really honor of this dead tree to be called like that, okay? And so in 2011, 
they planted in the soil. And I remember her saying, because we carry on following this story for many years now, and she was saying one day uh, in one of the interviews, she said, well, we find some leaves who are white now on this dead tree and we're really concerned that it will carry on growing. We don't know, but no, 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 he carry on. And so in 2011, he was planted in the soil, he's in a Ketura, he's in a kibbutz in the south. And in 2015, he produced pollen. So now uh, they discovered that it was also a male dead. So it's just amazing, all this story. And in 2020, they, they measure it and it's about three meters five now. And so they, so this is a very old, it was like original from the Judean hills, okay? And, and so it was original. And because now all the dead, the dead palms were from uh, here in Israel, usually they are from Morocco or they are from Iraq. So that one is different. The property is different. They find obviously historically some stories about it. They were sweet. They were used also for medicine. And, and, uh, and now, so he can produce pollen. So they started to make it going with some other female uh, trees. But now they are discovering that they find some other seeds that they planted, which is from the Judean dates, and they have some names, Adam, Jonah, Hannah, and so they are really going now to have the real dates, and uh, it's for the healing of the wow. nations too, so wow. it's quite amazing. Well, we're out of time. Great to be with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget you can visit the website www.israelfirst.org. Email us at info at israelfirst.org. Remember, we're the program that looks at the land, the people, and the language.